Hello everyone, good evening. Uh, my name is Aaron Sinclair and for my course paper I wanted just to discuss HIV and AIDS in South Africa. And just some background of the country of South Africa. South Africa has a geographic size of 470,900 square miles, which is about one fourth of the size of the state of Texas. So you can imagine Texas is one of our largest states in the United States and South Africa is only about one fourth the size of that. The current population of South Africa is 60, 60 million, 41,994 people. So just imagine the country is this one fourth the size of Texas, so just a fraction of Texas, but has over 60 million people living in the country. So you can just kind of see how dense the population of that country is in relation to the area that it um, takes up. South Africa has the largest economy in the entire continent of Africa. And then the industries that South Africans depend on are mining, automobile assembly, metalworking, and machinery. And then just some continued background information about South Africa. In South Africa, 7.7 .7 million people live with HIV, which is the most in the entire world. The countries that follow behind South Africa are Mozambique with 2.2 million people and India with 2.1 million people. South Africa makes up about 32% of the cases of HIV in the entire continent. So just imagine about 32 to 33% of all the HIV cases in the entire continent of Africa are located with South, within South Africa. And just some um, background of the outbreak and when HIV and the AIDS epidemic started in South Africa. And the HIV AIDS epidemic started in South Africa around 1982. And around that time, that's um, in a lot of other countries, that's around the time of starting as well. H HIV spread into the homosexual and black communities. HIV rates increased 60% in the mid 1990s. And by this time, South Africa had the largest population living with HIV. So at that point, you can just imagine from, from 1982 to the mid 1990s, or just say, give it 1995, around that time. So it's about 10 years uh, HIV rates increased 60%. And as I so I'm stating in the previous slide, there's 60 million people who live in South Africa and there's 7.7 .7 million actually living with HIV currently. So just imagine that large population, 60% um, of the race increased into that large population. So you can imagine the how quick the virus is spreading throughout the country. A five-year plan to combat HIV and AIDS. The AIDS epidemic was denied by President Tabar Thibodeau Mabik in 2000, and then once Mabik was removed in 2008, efforts picked up regarding the response of HIV and AIDS. And as a result, the largest HIV drug program in the world was created. Okay, and this can give you a continued background of the outbreak of HIV and AIDS in South Africa. Mother-child transmission of HIV declined from 8% in 2008 to 2.7% in 2012. Improved surveillance at antenatal clinics and use of prophylac prophylactic HIV medications have helped reduce the case of MTCT. South Africa continues to respond to HIV and AIDS because of a weakened public health infrastructure and currency under President Jacob Zuma. So, um, because currently of their state of their country right now, it makes it harder for them to uh, respond as promptly as they would like to HIV and AIDS. So that's why you continue to see cases still occur within the country, even though advances have been made um, towards mitigating the spread of the disease within the country. And then the different methods of surveillance that are used in South Africa, antenatal surveys are one method of surveillance, and they're just used to uh, track HIV and AIDS in South Africa. With this survey, every October, 30,000 women from each province in South Africa are randomly selected to take the survey. Information collected through the survey includes 
antiretroviral drug uses, viral loads, and CD4 counts. And uh, these, um, so with these statistics, the antiretroviral drug uses, you can see people who have HIV are using their drugs or are they using it as they need to. And then viral loads and CD4 counts can assess the level um, or how far the virus has progressed in each individual. Household surveys are used to assess the effect of HIV and AIDS on children. Reports on national plans with detailed investment into research have been produced by the South African AIDS Council. And Tier.net is a patient monitoring system used to track cases of HIV as they arrive, arise. And once um, using that monitoring system, it uh, allows South African health officials to um, treat HIV individuals in this early stages. So it can help re one it can help reduce the spread of virus and two it can help um the longevity of the lives of those people who are affected with the hiv virus and it's just some epidemiology of hiv and aids in south africa and some statistics like i said previously 7.7 .7 million in south africa live with hiv the pre prevalence rate of the general population for hiv is 24-4 so that means about one in every five people in South Africa live with HIV. HIV incidence rates among all ages are 3.98 per 1,000 people, was reported in 2019. Women, adolescent girls, transgender women, sex workers, and homosexual men are highest affected by HIV in South Africa. 18.1% of homosexual men in South Africa are living with HIV and drug users and children are also at high risk of contracting HIV. And then here is a chart just displaying the estimated new HIV infection among 15 to 24 year olds from 2010 to 2019. And as you can see, there has been a downward trend in the amount of new cases that occur every year among this age group. But you know, we still need to, um, the country still needs help and more assistance with continuing to mitigate the spread as cases um, do still arise frequently every day. And then this chart is just um, displaying from 2010 to 2019 estimated annual AIDS related deaths among 15, 24 year olds. And as before, you can see there's a decline in the number of deaths. And at one point they start to kind of stagger off. So um, South Africa is looking to continue just to mitigate uh, those, the deaths that occur because of AIDS and as continuing with treatment and providing resources to individuals affected that you can continue to see, to see these rates drop. And here's the, some preventative measures um, that were put in place in South Africa, antiretroviral medication accessibility to those treatments for mothers. Mother to child transmission of HIV went from 3.6% in 2011 to 1.3% in 2017. Um, they established programs to increase distribution and promote condom use. So um, doing that, you prom um, promote safer sex practices that can help um, mitigate and slow down the spread of HIV. Uh, make female condom available in non-traditional places. And those non-traditional places can be places such as uh, convenience stores, um you're like the local the supermarkets places like that like places outside of maybe like a pharmacy where you can um have easier access to the um female condoms and then male circumcision reduces female to male hiv transmission up to 60 percent so the vmmc was created in 2016 to encourage encourage male circumcision and then um obviously to what's available is pre-exposure prophylaxis and that is taken to um, help to ensure that to help protect you for just in case you're exposed to HIV. And then here um, is a chart of mother child HIV transmission rate from 2010 to 2019, and South Africa has done a good job to reduce those rates over those years. Some barriers that are still facing HIV AIDS control, a larger population that resides in South Africa that allows for disease to spread easier. Um, with HIV and with um, disease in general, the more people that inhabit an area, especially a smaller area like South Africa, it is easier for people to interact and socialize. And as a result of that, those unsafe practices will be practiced. 
Um, it's easier to spread disease. There are more people were, um, would interact with each other and meet with each other. So it gives more room for the disease to spread throughout the country. And because of the unstable political structure and poor public health infrastructure, it makes it hard for South African um, governments to respond to um, the pu uh, public health situations in a timely manner. So because of that, you see, because of that at the be um, beginning stages when the outbreak just occurred, you saw a, a exponential increase in number of cases of HIV, which puts South Africa in the position they're in today where they have the largest number of people living with HIV out of any country in the world. And an increasing currency in South Africa makes it hard to afford those resources that individuals need to help um, treat HIV. So with decreasing currency, you wouldn't be able to go out and get those resources. And then with less resources, it will make it harder to slow down the spread of HIV. And then just my assessment on the efforts to control the outbreak, I feel like a lot of things was reactive and not proactive. If um, the steps were taking, taken initially when the outbreak just occurred, I feel like um, the spread wouldn't have been as bad and it would have been a lower burden of disease on the country, but because of the slow response, or well, not even slow response, just the the ignorance and just ignoring it and putting blame on other things, the um, virus was ignored, and now because of that, it's more reactive to you're you're reacting to the um to the negligence from before. So right now, it's a matter of trying to control the spread to a population in the millions where it, when it comes to people living with HIV. So I feel like um, being reactive, not proactive, and poor leadership on the governor's part throughout the years um, has created a high burden of disease because of the slow response. And as I stated before, a poor public health structure um, makes it hard as well. So that needs to improve as well to help improve in responding to HIV and proper education and funding for HIV could have slowed the spread of the virus. But as I said before, the um, leaders of the country didn't take the virus seriously. So those resources weren't put towards that to help mitigate the spread of the virus. And then um, one prevention and control, control strategy I suggested is making testing required as part of a yearly physical. And this is something that would be funded by the federal government. So say if you're a resident of South Africa and going for your yearly physical, Part of that physical would be uh, HIV test. So doing that, make sure that everyone's being tested and that this program will be funded by the federal government. And it would be required that all primary care physicians conduct the HIV test to um, any patient that they see for a routine physical. And these are the different resources and um, sites that I use for my um, course paper. Yeah, so that's that with um, my um, course paper on South Africa, HIV and AIDS prevention in South Africa. And that's it. You have a great day.